So in this talk, I'm going to try to define equivalence relations and equivalence classes, and I'm going to show how they're related. Uh, the equivalence between the notion of equivalence relations and the notion of equivalence classes and partitions. Okay, so we begin with taking a set and a relation on the set. Now, what's a relation? Well, a relation is just a subset of S cross S. That means it's like saying for every pair of elements A in S and B in S, either that pair satisfies the relation, in which case that pair is in this subset, or it doesn't satisfy the relation, in which case that pair is not in the subset. Okay? So it's like saying on the set S cross S, you have some kind of of a binary function that is either either a pair is in R or it's not. If the pair is in R, you say the elements are related. If it's not, then you say they're not. So we'll denote A R B if the pair A comma B is in R. Okay. Now I'll say R is reflexive. Reflexive if what? A is well, what pairs should be in R for R to be reflexive? Oh, oh, A, A comma A. Yeah. Or if you want to write it like this thing, you write A, R, A. For what A? For every A. For all A in what? Yes. In S. In S, great. So this is a definition of reflexive. So given any relation, I can ask, is the relation reflexive or not? How would I check if it's reflexive? I would check that this condition is true for all A. <coughs> we say R is symmetric if what? If uh, one A comma B is in, uh, is in R, hmm? then B comma A is in R. Yes. Okay, so for all A, B, and S. By the way, when, when somebody writes for all A, comma B and S, usually that means that A and B are allowed to be equal as well. Okay? But sometimes it's not. So you should always check from the context what that means. Okay. So what does this mean? It means if the pair A, comma B is in R, so if A and B are related, then B and A are also related. Okay? Now actually I could have just put this one direction. Why would it be enough to just write this in a single direction? Because if A and B are related, A and B will be in S and then the B comma A will be a, a subset of S cross S. Is that a reason? Mm, sort of, but I don't think you said it very clearly. So, so let me put it, say it. So if A R B implies B R A, you can, or you can interchange the roles of A and B in that thing and also get the other way around. Right, so both directions are sort of saying the same thing, which means if you assume one direction is true, then so is the other, and therefore the two are equivalent. Okay. okay. So far, so good. Now, R is transitive. If what? If uh, when A comma B is in R, yeah, okay, so that's the thing, A, R, B. B, B, R, C, and okay. then we have A, R, C. So if this is true for what? This is true for all A, all A, B, C, S. Again, we allow some allow them to be equal or not. Well, actually, since this relation is reflexive, uh, you don't have to worry about allowing things to be equal. But but in general, you should just be equal. So here, A and B are allowed to be equal. Here, A, B, C are allowed to be equal. <coughs> okay, R is an equivalence relation. If what? If it is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. That was easy. Okay. So, and transitive. 
in a future video, we'll explain what exactly this means from a number of perspectives. But for now, I want to consider the one way of thinking about equivalence relation as what it does to your set. So here's your set. Okay, let's say you are here in the set. So this is your point A. And I want to look at all the things to which A is related. So is that set non-empty? Yes. Why? Because A is in the set. A is in the set. So I'm looking at all the things. So I'm looking at all B such that A are B. And B is an S, I guess I should say that. Okay, so I'm looking at all the B and S such that A is related to B. That set B, that set of things related to A is already includes A. So let's say I found this set, let's say it's this thing. Now I want to claim a couple of things. The first is, Okay, so we just said this, this set is called the equivalence class of A. By the way, th what I'm going to say is valid only for equivalence relations. So, from now on, assume I'm talking of equivalence relations. Let's check that now. I mean, you can define this for any relation, but the things I'm going to say is, say are going to be true only for equivalence relations. The first is everything in this set, everything in here is related to everything else. Oops, this should be equivalence class of literally. Okay, so everything in the equivalence class in the set uh, maybe I'll choose a notation so this I'll call so everything in the equivalence class so I'm the I'm using this symbol this thing bracket a to denote this full set everything in the set a is related to everything in the set Okay, do you see why that's true? Mm, sort of, but that's not the full explanation. Suppose I take two things here, B and C. Now, what do I know? I know that A are B. I also know that A are C. Right? Yeah. How can I deduce from that that B are C? Uh, we use symmetry first and then trust it. Okay, right. So, what we have is just the proof here. A R B and A R C implies that if you symmetry here, you get B e R A and A R C, which implies by transitivity B R C. So symmetry helps you flip around the things within each thing, and transitivity helps you uh, combine parts, right? Mm -hmm. So everything in, in here is related to everything. Okay. Now, the next thing is sort of the more surprise. It's actually the same thing. Nothing in the set is related to anything outside the set. Okay, do you see that? No, you mean the Okay, so let's say, let's say you have an element here D inside and you have an element E outside. And let's say these are related. Okay, now what happens? Well, A is already related to D. 
right by definition so what would that tell you a is related to e a is related to e would that be a problem what's the definition of the equivalence class it's everything that a is related to mm -hmm. right so so a cannot be related to anything outside and that's why d also cannot be related to anything outside so that this is actually just the relations which go from inside to outside but because the relation is symmetric you can use the same argument to show that e cannot be related to d mm -hmm. okay so the upshot is i'm not i'm not writing down the proof for this but the upshot is is that is that for anything in the set if you take any element in the set the equivalence class of that element is the same as the equivalence class of a so do you get that yeah what did what do I mean? Uh, you mean you suppose uh, I take some element f here, which is in A. So if f is in A, then then what? Then, then everything related with f is in A. Yes. So, but I'm 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 saying something more. Is I'm saying that this is actually equal to A. Okay. Okay. As you pointed out. From these two facts, you can immediately see that the, that the equivalence class of f is contained in the equivalence class of a, right? But you can also see that they are equal because everything in so from the first point you can see that everything in a is is uh, related to f, right? And from the second point you can see that nothing in a, uh, nothing outside a is related to f, and that's why the equivalence class of f is exactly the same as the equivalence class of a, which means that that I can now just talk of the concept of what it what of whether a set is an equivalence class, right? Because this set being the <coughs> since it's the equivalence of one element, it's also the equivalence class of every other element in the set. Okay, so what this means is now what I can do is I can look at this whole set, and for every point in the set, I can look at its equivalence classes. Equivalence class, I mean. Can it happen? Can it happen that two of the equivalence classes intersect? So can it happen that I have the equivalence class of A and then I have some other equivalence class which is this shape? No. Why not? Because I because F cannot be related to anything outside. Yeah, nothing in the set can be related to anything outside. And that's why the equivalence classes cannot intersect. Which means that if I look at every element, consider its equivalence class, then what do I get on the whole set? I've divided my entire set into pieces, where no two pieces intersect, right? But do you know that every piece, the, the whole set will be covered by the Yes, pieces? because for every element, there, that, is in, that is in its own piece, right? That's where the reflexivity comes in, mm -hmm. right? Because we know that for every element, the the piece, the equivalence class of that element contains that element. So I know that everything is covered. Okay. Let's go over that again. Mm -hmm. So okay, let me just say this. So the equivalence classes form a partition of the so equivalence classes partition the set into the word partition means means what I'm saying. So it's enough to say partition the set, but I'll just clarify. Are we down here? Yeah. Into pairwise disjoint and collectively in pairwise disjoint subsets whose union is the whole set. Okay, just, just explain it again. This explains sort of the key idea behind the whole thing um, hmm. of this part. We started with an element to the equivalence class. Yeah. Then the what did we do? Equivalence class of an element is a subset of the whole set. Yes. Yes. That doesn't intersect with other sets. Well, that, that, that that's some, that's something we come to later. First, what do we prove for the equivalence class? What were the two things we proved to begin with? Everything in there, it yeah, is, is related to everything in there. Yeah, and everything in there is not related 
nothing in there is related to anything else out there. Yeah. And from these facts, actually, we get everything else. We get that the equivalence class of any element in the in this equivalence class is the same as the original equivalence class. So equivalence class doesn't depend on which element in there you pick. Which in turn means that 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 the equivalence classes are for any two elements, either their equivalence classes are exactly the same or they are completely disjoint. Which means that your whole set you can divide in as a as a union of pairwise disjoint equivalence classes. Uh, can we can you say it again? Like uh, explicitly, what is the equivalence relation? So that's a subset of the equivalent. Okay, like a, nature, rela a relation. Is a subset. Sorry. In nature, the equivalence relation is is a in subset. In nature. Yeah, is a well, what is? I'm oh, the, the the equivalence relation is a subset. Is, I mean, any relation is a subset of S cross S. Equivalence relation is a subset of S cross S which satisfies these conditions. Then what is equivalence class? Is it a subset of S? Equivalence classes are subsets of S. That's connected. That's defined uh, like based on equivalence. Relation. Now, yeah, it turns out, so this is an interesting additional point that if I give you the equivalence classes, again, I don't tell you the relation, but I tell you what this partition looks like. You can reverse engineer and reconstruct the original equivalence relation. So the information about the equivalence relation, let me just put this here, so the sort of equivalence relation is completely described by the partition it induces. I mean, struct like the equivalence relation is is not the same thing as the equal as this as this partition, but it it captures the same information. Do you did you get that? Mm -hmm. What do I mean? Well, that's actually another question I want to ask. For the, all those equivalence classes in your set, hmm. are they defined on the same equivalence relation? Yes, everything is with respect to a particular equivalence relation, right? Otherwise, they may not be disjoint. If I change the equivalence relation, then I might then, then, then overlap. yeah. So this all everything is with respect to this particular equivalence relation. So if I start with an equivalence relation, I can define equivalence classes. They'll form a partition of the set. And now the additional thing I'm saying is, if I give you this partition, you can use the partition to figure out what the original equivalence relation was. How would you do that? Suppose I give you the partition and I don't tell you explicitly what the relation was. How would you figure out what the relation was? How would you de define the relation? Well, the way you define it is you'd say that two elements are related if they are in the same piece. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And now you'd have to check that, that that definition defines an equivalence relation. Well, every element is in the same piece as itself. If two elements are in the same piece, then, you know, they're still in the same piece when you switch them around. And transitive, if A and B are in the same piece and B and C are in the same piece, A and C are also in the same piece. But maybe there is a relation that fits the subset you just described, but if we apply that to another subset of the set, then this guy does not the relation. So can the, is the relation, like, um, unique to a subset? Can, is there only one relation for a subset? For a set, you mean? Oh uh, yeah, for a set. No, no, there could be lots of different equivalence relations on a set. Uh, no, actually, that's not the question. The question is, if we find a relation for, let's say, subset A, and then we'll know that's the relation for the whole set, or we can find other relations. Oh, you mean that instead of this whole set yeah, S, you are you're, you found like some part of it, and you find any the equivalent oh, relation. relation? Yeah. No, I mean if you if you, if you just describe found the equivalent relation on this piece, mm -hmm. it's not enough to tell you what the equivalent relation is everywhere else. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where this comes up though, so I don't know where your question is sort of motivated from. Yeah, it's but, motivated from the fact that you given the partition, we want to know what the equivalence relation is. Okay, but the partition actually gives you complete information about the equivalence relation. And the, the partition describes everything about the equivalence relation. Okay. Okay. 